What's up everybody? Amiga Bill here. Amiga OS 3.2 is now available and today I'm going to show you 13 cool new features. Lucky 13. But your meditation. Thanks everyone for checking out this video. This is just going to be a very quick rundown of 13 cool new features of Amiga OS 3.2 that have jumped out at me so far. I've just started playing with OS 3.2 and I haven't gotten that deep into it. I mean, there's over 100 new features and a battery of bug fixes. But before I start, I want to give a big shout out to Steve from Retro Passion. Steve donated a copy of OS 3.2 to my Twitch stream and we raffled it off this past weekend. Retro Passion's also an Amiga Bill VIP patron, so Steve, thank you so much for your generous support. Okay, cool feature number one, easy installation. The install procedure is very streamlined and has advantages when installing on real hardware, like not having to worry about the max transfer rate if you have a built-in Commodore hard drive controller as well as other common hard drive controllers. You can do a clean install or install over an existing workbench installation. The installer is now more compatible with previous Amiga OS versions and also preserves key files like your startup sequence. Number two, glow icons are no longer hidden, thank goodness. If you remember my OS 314 install video, we had to do some trickery to find and install the glow icons after the installation. However, they are now built into the installer, which is so much better and easier. Number three, generic CPU libraries are built right into the installer. I'm really lucky, and I recently got a Terrible Fire 1260 card for my Amiga 1200. After I got it, I went over to Amunet and downloaded the latest MMU Libs. But now MMU Libs is integrated right into the installer, so you don't have to go to Amunet. Now I haven't tried this feature yet because I haven't installed 3.2 on my real Amiga. I've just been experimenting in emulation because I feel less stress about messing something up in emulation versus my real Amiga. Number 4. There's now support for using scroll wheels on your mouse. My favorite features of OS 3.2 so far are creature comforts that make the OS feel more up to date and modern. Being able to use a scroll wheel to navigate around a window or scroll text in a long document is such a nice little feature. I can't tell you how many times my muscle memory would automatically use the scroll wheel with older versions of Amiga OS and then I'd be like, duh, can't do that. Well now you can. Number five. Windows are now draggable off screen. This is such a nice feature. It makes moving windows around so much more friendly. The trick is that this is not automatically activated right out of the box. You have to go to Prefs, Eye Control, and check Can Move Off Screen. Number six, windows can now be resized from any border. Instead of being limited to resizing the window by using that little gadget in the lower right corner of the window, you can now grab any border of the window and resize it. I also love how the pointer changes to indicate resize mode as you get close to a border. However, this is another feature that must be enabled. Go to Prefs, Eye Control, and check Resizable from all sides. Lucky number seven, you can iconify active programs. There's now a cool little tool in the upper right corner of Windows that lets you iconify the program. This is the iconify button right here. Click on it. Boom, and Shell's now an icon. Let's iconify find. Boom, now finds an icon. We'll get the find in a minute. And if you want to open it back up, click on shell and we're back in business. <laughs> so cool. Number eight, customizable workbench title bar. If you go into workbench preferences, you can change what appears in the workbench title bar or even get rid of it completely. So we go into prefs, workbench, and down here at the bottom is where we can edit the title bar. Uh, you can click on this if you want no title bar at all. Uh, you can see there are some variables in this window that we can edit. I'm not familiar with all the variables yet. I'm going to get into that. But for now, let's just do Amiga Amiga Bill Workbench. Let's change it to Amiga Bill Workbench. It's hilarious. Boom. Close this out. And <laughs> there it is. Amiga Bill Workbench release 3.2. Hilarious. Number nine, amazing help documentation. Help documentation is now built into the OS. But the thing I really love is the vast amount of information in the help. It's like reading an entire Amiga OS manual. This is accessible by hitting the help key, navigating to it on the title bar, or clicking on the help icon. I can get the help by right-clicking, tools, help. 
And here is this amazing Amiga Operating System 3.2 reference manual. It is loaded with information. Number 10. ADF support is now built into the operating system. ADF files are Amiga disk image files. It's really easy to mount them if you're using an emulator or a GoTech drive. But on some of my Amigas, I have actual floppy drives, and this feature makes it super easy to mount an ADF right in Workbench. Alright, so check it out. Here's an ADF file that I made of an actual floppy disk of the, the Bronx User Group December 1995 Disk of the Month. So we just double click on it, and boom. Look at that, it mounted right into Workbench. That's really, really neat. Open it up, and yeah, run out, open up the wreath. Boom, it's Christmas in June. <laughs> I've been using third-party apps to do this for many years now, but it's awesome to have it built right into the OS. Now, the ADF does unmount when you reboot, so if you want to use a bootable ADF, the GoTech is still your best bet. Number 11, the Find feature. Amiga OS now has a Find feature built right in, which makes finding files an absolute breeze. Alright, so I've got Way Too Rude by Logicoma and Looney's over on my Work32 drive. Um, but let's use the find feature to try and find it. So we'll go to window, find, and this opens up the awesome new find feature. Uh, search from, I have all selected because it means it'll search all my drives. And then we have some options here. Uh, you can search for the exact name, but I can never get the exact name right. So we can do whose name contains, matching the pattern, or contains the string. We're going to say whose name contains, and we'll do rude. Boom. And then we'll hit start. And boom, that was quick. That was amazingly fast. And showing me on the Work32 drive in the root directory, I've got Logicoma and Looney's Way Too Rude, baby. Woo! It's freaking fired up. Number 12 Updated Data Types. OS 3.2 has built in data type support for modern file formats like JPEG, PNG, WAVE, AIFF, and more. So check this out. Now you can access modern file formats right in Workbench. All right, so here I've got a folder full of stuff. Uh, I love how some of the icons are syncing up properly with the, the data type it is. So here's a WAV file, Megasm WAV file by Comatron. It's got some musical notes there, and there's our bug ADF file with the floppy disk. That's pretty neat. So um, let's try playing this AIFF file. This is just a boing ball sound effect. Open it up, play it. Boom, and that's so cool, playing an AIFF file right in Workbench. That is freaking awesome. Let's fire up Amigasm by Comatron. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so cool that you can do that like right in Workbench. Uh, check it out, here's a an image that I made. This is a JPEG image that I made as a, as a Workbench background for uh, some of my patrons. We can just Click, double click on the JPEG, boom, and there it is. Uh, how amazing is that? That's pretty neat. Now, this not displaying properly because this JPEG image is a 24-bit image, and right now I'm running Workbench in just a standard 128 color high-res mode. So obviously you're not seeing the full uh, quality of the image because it's 24-bit, but it's just really cool that you can open up these new types of files in Workbench. If I had an RTG card, then you'd see this in its proper, you know, 24-bit format. Lucky 13, Enhanced Shell. The shell has a ton of new enhancements. I'm not going to touch on them all here, but I thought this one feature was pretty interesting. You can drag an icon into the shell and it will appear on the command line. I haven't fully flushed out all the uses of this feature yet, but I want to show you because it's pretty cool. Check it out. So here is my Work32 virtual hard drive and I got the Metal Gear Cracktro from Hoffman on it and I can just literally take the icon and drag and drop it into the shell window and there it is. <laughs> See it shows you the path. Work32, Metal Gear, Cracktro. Hit enter to execute it. Boom! And we're in baby. Yes! Hoffman! There I am, there I am. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this very brief overview of some of the features of Amiga OS 3.2 that I've been enjoying so far. Now this barely scratches the surface of all the new features. If you're interested in buying OS 3.2, there's a list of all the retailers that are selling it on Hyperion's website. The link is in the description of this video. And one quick note, at the time of this video, OS 3.2 is only available as a physical CD-ROM. 
And many folks have come to me and expressed concern about this because they don't have a CD-ROM drive for their Amiga. But don't worry, you can put the CD-ROM into a PC and copy the ADF installation files off of it to use with an emulator, a GoTech drive, or to be made into actual floppy disks. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Guru Meditation.